Few could have imagined this, the extraordinary journey that's taken the Wallabies from turmoil to Twickenham, adding hasty new chapters to sports psychology textbooks. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! What Checker has done, you know, he's, he's revolutionised the team, the spirit, the culture. He brought everyone together to work on what was going to be uh, a Wallaby, I guess, way of playing. Uh, I think belief is a big part of that, so actually believing you can do well and win, and I think that's something the team was probably lacking when Czech came in. Three generations of Wallabies captains, a winner in 91, a member of the 99 winning side, and the current contender to hold this year's coveted trophy, all bear witness to a remarkable team journey. difficulty made clear from the disastrous starting point just a year ago. I resigned this morning at uh, 10 o'clock. Ewan McKenzie's dramatic resignation as coach came amid rumours of an affair, claims of character assassinations, a row over offensive text messages embroiling star player Kirtley Beale. It crippled the team's spirit on and off the field. It's a huge distraction. And it's probably not a true uh, representation of that group. And it's probably not a true representation of you, McKenzie. You know, I won't go into the details and the personnel, um, but, but things were in disarray at that stage. Enter Michael Checker, a canny coach, but polarising behind the scenes. Even before he was appointed to lead the Waratahs, Nick Farr-Jones, as New South Wales Rugby Union chairman, wanted to do some checking. And I wanted to make sure this time that we had the right guy. And so I, I spent a long time on the phone to the chief executive of Leinster Rugby, where Michael coached and coached Leinster to a European Cup. I learnt two things. I mean, basically, he'll be a great coach. He'll get the best out of your players. But he's a mongrel to manage. The Waratahs flourished. Then the Wallabies chose this mongrel to repair the national squad. But the team's first outings under Checker revealed the task ahead. We need to change some things. Because obviously what we're doing now is not conclusively working enough. And I watched them 12 months ago, it was coming up to 12 months ago when they lost to England here at Twickenham. I think it was his fourth test match. And I don't think he, I think they had one victory on that tour, but you could see what they were going to build towards, potentially. A number of crucial decisions followed. Checker pushed for a change in rules to accept foreign-based Wallabies, bringing the brilliance of Matt Gitto and Drew Mitchell into the team. One of Australia's most improved players, Drew Mitchell. And then there was the appointment of Mario Ledesma, the Argentinian scrum genius. Ledesma's got under the bonnet of the scrum and, and he's repaired it. And, and it's a critical game. I mean, the, the great thing about rugby is that everyone has to do their job. The little guys can't do their job if the big guys aren't setting the platform. And it's phenomenal to see the Australian scrum not just competing, but beating up on some teams like the English a few weeks ago. And the penalty goes to the Wallabies. Go! The most profound task, though, was to unify a splintered team. Checker brought in rival Super Rugby Brumbies coach and Wallaby legend Stephen Larkham to help build a tight backroom unit. A turning point came the day after a Waratahs Brumbies match. Checker brought the Wallaby squad together to brainstorm a new identity. To them, and I feel quite humbled, it makes you feel a bit old too, the 1999 team was really important to this group. He did that literally the day after they'd just been taking lumps out of each other in the local derby and said, hang on, you did that, which was great. I'm glad you guys competed really, really hard, but you need to take that, put that aside now, but have that same attitude and mentality when you go into the a Wallaby team, and this is what the Wallaby team stands for. And every player had some input into that. Uh, at the end of it, I guess we came up with something that we all agreed on and bought into, and that's been very powerful. And what is that? Can you put it into a few words? Yeah, well, there's quite a bit of content to it, but I guess it's just, um, you know, things like humility, hard work, honesty with each other. Stephen Moore says the Wallabies had to get personal. There's a lot of different characters there from very different backgrounds, and I think we probably took that for granted a little bit, and, and we really dug down and, and understood everyone's background, you know, what, what their mum, mum and dad uh, did, where they came from, where they grew up in Australia, all those type of things. And we really understood each other a lot better, understood our teammates, our coaches, and that's given us some really special bonds to take forward. 
As a result, Australian rugby hopes the Wallabies' approach to this tournament, win or lose, will boost the sport down to its grassroots. Michael, you do it your way, uh, which is the check away, because the results are fantastic. You know, it's revitalised from what I hear from a distance again. The enthusiasm from you know, supporters back home, it's exactly what we needed. We haven't had it for a decade. And the Wallabies are through to their fourth Rugby World Cup final. Sport's a great way to represent people and make people feel happy about something. And, and if we can do that, then I guess that's a little part of someone's life that they can you know, get up and be happy about. And we know people are getting up in the middle of the night at the moment to watch us play. And uh, I said to the boys, just think of all those alarm clocks that are going to go off on, on Sunday morning and people getting up and, and wishing us the very best. And, and that's really powerful for us as a team. Uh, great motivation. Incredible scenes in front of the Wallaby supporters.